Okay, so you just bought Melodyne and you're trying to get things figured out, or maybe you haven't bought Melodyne yet and you're trying to see if it's worth it. This video is for you. So here we are again in my logic session for Madeline Island. If you missed my last video where I talked about my full vocal chain for this particular cover, I will link it in the description down below this video. Let me just first quickly play you the section of the vocals that we're going to be tuning with all of the tuning already done and in the context of the song, just so you can get an idea. About drowned in a downpour before the northern lights Okay, so I chose this particular section of vocals because it's uh, pretty out of tune when it's not tuned. So let me show you what it sounds like soloed without any tuning. About drowned in a downpour before the northern lights. Okay, so it's not awful, but it could be a lot better. So we're going to start by adding Melodyne into our plugin chain. So you can see I already have it here, but I have it turned off because we're going to start from the beginning to show you guys. So we click Melodyne. And so this is what you're going to be presented with. It's sort of this canvas of notes that looks like piano notes. Um, so we need to get our vocals into Melodyne before we do anything else. So let's start by doing that. So all you got to do is click transfer right here. That button will, that light will turn red. And then we just play the part that we want in Melodyne from our DAW. About drowned in a downpour before the northern lights. And just like that, Melodyne grabs all the notes and separates them for us very conveniently. So the first thing we're going to want to do is zoom in a little bit more so that we can see the notes better. And we'll do that by grabbing the scroll bar at the bottom of the screen here and moving a little bit closer. We can do the side scroll bar as well to make the notes thicker or thinner. So Melodyne presents us with a few different tools. The first one is the main tool, and it's kind of a combination of all of the pitch tools. So I kind of stay away from that one. It can be a bit confusing. Um, the first real one that I use is the pitch tool. So the pitch tool basically just allows you to move the pitches around and it snaps it to the key that you're in, which is auto detected after Melodyne listens to your audio. So it auto detected D flat major, which is correct for this song. And then you can move the pitches around with this tool by grabbing and dragging. Just like that. It's a lot of fun. Um, and you can double click them to snap it into the key grid that you have set for your key signature. And uh, the most important thing about this tool, in my opinion, in Melodyne is the ability for it to uh, adjust the time between the time it takes to get from one pitch to another. So to do that, you just hover over the note and go right to the end of the note. You can see your cursor turns into the slope symbol, and this allows you to change the duration or the time in between pitches. So this slope tool is really helpful if your vocals are sounding robotic after you're done tuning and you need to touch them up a little bit. Just make the make the slope less steep and it will sound less robotic in general. So moving right along, the next pitch editing tool is the pitch modulation tool. This allows you to change the vibrato of a note. So, so this sounds really silly if I play it. So it sounds really weird. Um, if I if I make it less vibrato like this, uh, it's going to sound kind of robotic on that note. About drowned in a downpour. You can't tell too much here because it's a short note, but in general, the flatter the line, the more the less human it sounds in general. So if you're happy with your pitch modulation, but your pitch is drifting from the desired note, there is a tool just for you that Melodyne gives you, and it's called the pitch drift tool. And so you can grab the pitch drift tool and then click and hold on a note. Pull. And just like that, your pitch is no longer drifting from the desired note. In a downpour. So it sounds much more even. We're going to skip over the formant tool because you really won't use it, especially if you're starting out. Um, and actually, I don't really use it at all. Next up is the amplitude tool. So the amplitude tool does exactly what it sounds like. It changes the amplitude of a note, which just means the volume of the note. So if you have a really good vocal pass, but just one note you sang is like a little bit too loud or a little bit too quiet, all you got to do is grab the amplitude tool and you can click and hold on a note like all the other tools and make it outrageously loud or extremely quiet so you can barely hear it if that's what you desire. Um, if you go into this section of it called the sibilance balance tool, it allows you to do the same thing I just did with that note, except for only the sibilances. So Melodyne identifies sibilance, which is all the S, S sounds in your vocals that can be really annoying sometimes, or all of the T and the, all those harsh sounds, basically all the ones that sound similar. And it identifies them in red with these lines on them. So if you select an entire section of audio and then grab just one of the sibilance sections of sibilance and change the amplitude, it changes the sibilance in your entire selection without at all affecting the amplitude of the actual notes that actually have pitch because sibilance doesn't really have pitch and Melodyne knows that. Moving right along is the time tool. The time tool is really useful. Uh, you can select it and basically change the how long you sang a note. It can sound kind of unnatural sometimes. Let's see how it sounds here. In a downpour. 
Okay, so obviously it, it's not really meant for really, really long changes, but if you do want to change it without it snapping to grid like this, you just grab the end of the note and then you hit option if you're on a Mac or alt on Windows, and then you drag just like normal and you can kind of have free reign over to exactly how long you want your note to be. The last really important tool in Melodyne is the note separation tool. So to use this tool, you basically just click anywhere in a note and it splits it up. The reason why this is useful is, and you'll notice this if you start using Melodyne a lot, each blob just represents an average pitch over the time and the time is just the, the length of the blob and the lines inside of the blobs are the exact pitch at that time. So for example, if you look at the beginning here, this beginning note, um, this, this blob, there's a pitch line that goes way below the blob and then there's this little section of pitch right here. But for the most part, because of this section of pitch here, on average, the pitch was at this exact place. But obviously, the exact pitch line, because I kind of slid my vocals up here, you can listen. About drown. So it was kind of a quick vocal slide. So Melodyne is saying, on average, the pitch is right here. But if you do want to see this as a separate note, you just double click, and now it's a separate note. And now you can manipulate it as such. So now that we've quickly gone over what all the tools basically do, I want to show you an efficiency tip in Melodyne 5 that I haven't really seen too many other people on the internet talk about. Maybe they know about it, but I haven't really seen them talk about it. And that is the shortcuts tool. So it's exactly what it sounds like. If you go up to settings on the top left and then preferences, and then click this drop down on the top and then go to shortcuts and then go to editing tools, you can see all the different tools that I've just been talking to you about, except for now you can assign key values to them. To assign the key value, you just click on it and then hit the key that you want. And after that, you can click close. Now you can watch my tool selector up here. Now by just clicking letters on my keyboard, I can quickly switch between all of my most important Melodyne tools. So for example, if I wanted to tune this section here, I can click Z on my keyboard. And again, you can set this up however you want. I can click Z on my keyboard, which for me is my zoom tool. Double click on a note and it zooms in really nicely. Click A to go to the pitch tool and I can double click all the pitches that I want or select all and double click like this. And then I can click S to go to my pitch uh, modulation tool and change my modulation. I can click D and then go to my pitch drift tool and change pitch drift like this note. I'll try it on these notes. And I can click F and split some notes up if I need to. And it's just really much faster. I don't have a key binding for the time tool because I don't often use the time tool. For me, if I sing something out of time, I just sing it again because it's always going to sound way better. So that's basically it. That's how I tune my vocals in Melodyne 5. And the shortcuts are absolutely a necessary thing. I can't even, I used to use Melodyne by just right clicking and changing the tool like this because that's another option you do have. It's just way slower. It's way more mouse movement. And it's really, it makes it kind of boring when pitch correction can actually be pretty fun. So if you guys have any questions, of course, leave them down below. I know I went over this pretty quickly. I just wanted to give you a jump start into using Melodyne 5 for your vocals. Also, this particular cover of Madeline Island that I'm using as an example for you guys, I will be releasing within the next day or two. So keep an eye open for that. Thank you guys so much for watching.